how do you deal with fear? It's everything, you know? I say fuck fear, first of all, <laughs> because it's always gonna be there. You know, I've been doing this three, four years, I'm still afraid. My name is Brian, Brian Tam. I am the founder and CEO of Let's Make Great. Uh, we are a creativity consultancy focusing on the next 100 years of innovation in China. So basically what that means is we do anything and everything to help people to become more creative within China. We were uh, doing some Google research, Google research, and just looking at the different words that uh, are popping up. And if you search creativity in China, it's very, very low. All the new top 10 results are all negative results. They're saying these are, this, it's not gonna happen. Education is not gonna allow creativity to happen. But then interestingly, what's changed is that if you search innovation in China, the results are going up. So it's all positive news about how China's becoming more innovative, Chinese companies are becoming more innovative. So there is a, a, ch a change happening. It's in wordplay, but I think it's a real change. It's changing a lot. Uh, I started about three and a half, four years ago now. Uh, and since I started, I could see that larger scale organizations are now starting to reach out to startups and build up collaborations and connections. So BMW has a now an incubator. Uh, OMD is working with China Accelerate, of course. Uh, Unilever uh, and another New Zealand milk company, I forget the name, Fonterra, I think it is, yeah. They're also working with uh, internal entrepreneurship and, and building up their innovation game that games or that way. So I think it's, it's happening, it's starting to change. Three, four years ago when I started, I was like, entrepreneurship, this is the way to the future. This is gonna make everything, the world a better place. You build a, you build a company inside a bigger company. You know, how great is that? You get uh, all the joy and freedom of your own business, but, and also you get all the uh, power and distribution of a large company. And I thought that was gonna be it. Uh, companies don't like that uh, a lot of times. They're like, wait, you want them to be the boss? Well, what is my job gonna be? So there's a lot of people pushing back on that, but there's also a lot of other people that are making it happen because they do see it as a way forward. So those are the, the front runners. And, and so there's hope, there's hope. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who don't get it. I mean, they're just trying to, they're not really doing the, the, the homework of talking to the people who are actually gonna be using it or, or getting in touch with their, their ideas. So that needs to change. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, definitely. Do they think they know better than the Chinese? Or like, there's a certain arrogance. There's a certain arrogance. Everybody has arrogance, though. So that's always going to be the case. You know, we are from the West. We know better, and this is what we should be doing. But is that always true? No. I mean, somewhere in the middle, through the process, you figure out. Okay, I do need to change. Hopefully, people are figuring out that they do need to change because at the end. Money, money shows how much uh, impact you're really making or how much uh, traction you're getting. So uh, I think that it needs to be a, a significant metric, a true metric. Oh, so a lot of entrepreneurs, they, or let's not even call them entrepreneurs yet. They're, they're, they're not entrepreneurs yet. I can't even say that. They're just guys with ideas or people with ideas. And that's nice and that's good. And usually those ideas are about making impact and helping people to do something better. But how realistic or how um, driven are they? They a lot of these people I work with are entrepreneurs, creatives, designers, uh, architects, uh, educators, consultants, all knowledge-based people, right? And so yeah. they're not really thinking about how do I make this happen. They're thinking about thinking about thinking about making it happen. <laughs> and so there's several layers away from that, and it's good. We need that. We need thinking. It's important, but. Where's the, where's the rubber meet the road, right? And that's where I'm really trying to push these people to get to, you know, interact with the Chinese market, making sure that their idea really work uh, for, for whoever they're targeting. Um, that's always been an interesting thing to get people to move towards because they're afraid. They don't know. Because if you actually start meeting the road and you get resistance, then everything changes. You're not sure if you can really do it. You're not sure if uh, you, you, get, you hit reality and reality is hard and it sucks and it hurts. So people are gonna be scared of that. It's making, it's getting pushback. And so in ideal land, in, in the uh, dream world, anything's possible and that's fun, that's energetic and that's exciting and that's sexy and it's like, it's alluring for a lot of these uh, creative uh, leaders to, to think about their ideas again and again and again, but it doesn't go anywhere. And I think that's one of the biggest things that needs to change for a lot of people is that I don't care if you're a teacher, go make it real. I don't care if you're uh, an artist, actually do something with it you know everyone's got ideas it's not about ideas it's about execution so that but it's fear it's fear that's preventing them it's interesting I couldn't say on the Chinese side um, again I'm not really working with them but just looking at the things that are coming out you can see they're very much based on uh, other ideas 
but they are mixing and matching. So it's more plug and play and collecting different ideas together. And I think that's a type of innovation as well. Uh, with the foreign entrepreneurs, maybe they're trying to do something a little more different, a little more disruptive, but also it's just two different strategies. I don't think either one is right or wrong. It's just two different strategies. So, so yeah, there's a lot of different entrepreneurs here. I think the community here has been developing and that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a clear divide though between the Chinese entrepreneurs and the uh, foreign entrepreneurs. Uh, I mainly work with the foreign ones or the foreign creatives. And so they are pushing the line, but their impact is, is somewhat limited as we talked about earlier. Um, they're always looking for a Chinese partner and they're always looking for a way to, 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 to get their products into the, into the market a little bit more localized, right? Or they wait and they make those excuses that say, I can't do that because I don't have that partner. I can't do that because I can't speak Chinese. I can't do that because uh, whatever, I, I don't have um, Chinese funding or whatever it is. And I think those are excuses. Uh, and I really try to get these people to keep pushing on their own side to do what they can. What, what is within your control? And so that's always been an interesting mind shift for a lot of these people because we're, we think we need help rather than we need to create momentum to attract help. And I think that's a, a complete mental shift that a lot of people need to get towards. So they're afraid of uh, failure is the biggest thing, right? I mean, they build up these fantasies in their head. They build up these big dreams. And, and I mean, I got them too. My, my big dream is 100 years of innovation in China. That's pretty big. Let's think about that. 100 years. China innovation. This is like the three biggest ideas in the world right now or whatever it is, right? It's, it's, it's scary. It's, it's unrealizable almost, but it's not supposed to be realizable right now. It's supposed to be realizable in that time. So uh, I try to separate people's ideas or thinking into short term, long term. And short term, you need to have that action, but you need to be guided by that long term vision. So uh, that is something I'm trying to separate for people so that they, they do start taking action because fear of failure is this kind of ambiguous fear. You don't know where it's coming from. Uh, you don't know w what might cause that failure. And so it could come from anywhere. You know, it, here there are different uh, factors, drivers at play, right? The government plays, they have their rules and we're here playing by their rules. It's the name of the game, so. How do you deal with fear? It's everything, you know? I say fuck fear, first of all, <laughs> because it's always gonna be there. You know, I've been doing this three, four years, I'm still afraid, you know? It's just a, a part of it. If you're afraid, it means you're doing something new, which means you're on the right path. If you're afraid, if you're not afraid, then what are you doing? What, what, you're so comfortable that you don't have to think about it. You're not putting yourself out there. Then what value are you adding to society, to your team, to your company, to the people around you, right? So you need to be doing something a little bit scary at least so that you can start to realize it. So I say, first of all, fuck fear, it's there deal with it. Uh, second of all, uh, start small, you know, get that feedback early so you know uh, if you're on the right track or not. So uh, if you have those small wins, they build up to a big win at the end. So that's a super, super critical step. And small step wins. What's, what's mm -hmm. a win when it's a small step? Is it market so, knowledge? Is it yeah, taking yeah. the first 20,000 RMB? Is it... Well, 20,000 RMB, some, you know, for entrepreneurs, that's a, that's a big win, you know. Uh, it is, small wins are even just people smiling as you talk about the idea and people are smiling and nodding and they go, okay, I kind of get that, right? A small win is even, they gave me feedback uh, that I can use to improve it. So, so maybe sometimes a small win is everything. Uh, you're just trying to switch your mind into looking for the small win rather than uh, looking for the failure, looking for the reason that you shouldn't do it. And I think a lot of people who are very smart uh, you know, these educators, consultants, designers, very, very smart people, very creative people, right? Mm -hmm. But because they're so critical, they start looking for all the reasons they shouldn't be doing it, all the no's. And uh, that adds up, you don't do anything. There's no action then. You just stop. You're paralyzed by fear. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying look for that small win, no matter what it is. No, there's always a small win. You got to look for it. You got to make, and as long as you take action, you, you have a small win. So that's, that's that small win, taking those small steps is really, really key. So for me, I don't give a shit about it. It's not for me to label. I don't care about labels. You can, you can call it whatever you want. As long as you're doing good, adding value, making the world a better place, you know, I don't care what you call that, but make sure that happens, right? If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a businessman, if you're a politician, if you're a homeless person, make the world a better place. It's, that's it. 
why, why else are you alive? Why is your heart beating? Why are you breathing air and consuming things, right? If you're not giving back in some way, right? Uh, my girlfriend, she's really amazing because she, she'll, she'll give uh, to, to all the homeless people. I'm like, oh, come on, you can't, you can't do this, right? But if they're playing music, she, she'll take out the 10 RMB or the 20 RMB note and she'll, she'll give them a little bit more, right? I think that's, it's the idea of, because they're adding value, they're creating this uh, atmosphere of, of positivity and enjoyment, right? Just like that. There's a positive atmosphere that we all can live and love by. It's, it's amazing. And so, giggle through. And giggle through. I like giggling. <laughs> so everyone's different. I can't give you an answer for how to start or where to start, but just start. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the wrong question to be asking. Just yeah. starting, right? And so uh, if you have one tool, go with that tool right now. If you have a million tools, then all right, maybe it's time to start using some of them, right? Yeah. But all these ideas are all really nice, but the ideas are pointless until you action them, until you realize them. And that's what an idea is for, right? It's for action, to, to make it come true. And so uh, I had that problem, right? I was, uh, I was a marketing guy uh, doing project management. Let's call it project management. Then I was an English teacher. Then I was a, another marketing guy in another leadership development company. And this was just ideas about ideas about ideas about ideas. And it just drove me crazy. I, I wasn't satisfied. And I thought, why not? Because they were just in my head and they weren't in reality and they weren't a part of my reality and so I went out and I quit my job and then I started Let's Make Great and I decided that this would be my vision by reflecting on my past I looked at the whys of my past and then I saw that these whys, these motivations were all leading towards something that I didn't even realize until I reflected so uh, I did I was lucky enough to have built up six, seven, eight years of working experience before I started reflecting. I know when you're a little bit younger, you, you don't have enough experience to, to know why yet. You, you just don't, you haven't collected enough dots. That's, some people say that. I don't think it's true either. I think if I reflected earlier, I probably would have thought of, I, I probably would have seen it earlier, but nobody was pushing me to think about it. So, uh, but that's, that's on me. I just, it's just circumstance, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, are you taking action? First assessment, are you taking action? And action is, research is not action. Research is preparing, planning is not action in my definition, all right? Um, getting feedback, talking to people, and uh, building something, that's action. So, you know, I was, I was looking at, uh, I'm gonna call you out, all right? I see you're uh, stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Have you actually put them all together yet? One video? Yep. Okay, good. Because I know I did that. Try, I tried to shoot a video before, and I stopped and started and stopped. And started. I couldn't bring it all together because there was like these weird cut points, right? And so that drove me crazy. I was like, "Are you? I was gonna say, are you? Are you taking action, dude? Are you really, you know, finally following through with that, right? Yeah, thank God for you, right? That's so, an action I hired her. <laughs> smart. Yeah, that's a big deal. I think uh, two things about this question is first is that um, entrepreneurship is the modern day spiritual journey, right? Because what is that? In entrepreneurship, you figure out who you are, what you're about, what you're trying to do, and uh, what value you have to society. If those, those aren't spiritual questions, I don't know what is. It doesn't matter, it just happens to be that if you do follow entrepreneurship, you figure out these things. Um, and then in China, it's nice because, coming from the West at least, um, you end up in this place where all the rules are different slightly or majorly and you just kind of go why and by having that huge impact to your your expectations and your beliefs that not everybody is crossing the road in the same way not everybody is dressed the same way not everybody's talking the same way not everybody's treating me the same way all those expectations that flip you around that flip you mentally around it's very challenging very frustrating very difficult but that creates a better environment for you to think creatively and think differently about doing something. So China is great because of that for now at this time and place. Uh, I think there's no better place in the world. The 20 year old fresh, fresh arrival uh, in Shanghai, I think there's so many opportunities to go explore. A lot of times uh, we fall into these patterns like we want to be comfortable. Obviously we're human beings, we want to be comfortable. So we find people that look like us, find people that talk like us, find people that think like us. And then that's good to a certain extent, but where are you expanding yourself? Where are you um, pushing yourself? Where is that, again, feeling uncomfortable, feeling afraid? That is a good thing. So use that as your barometer for right or wrong. Um, yeah, how much does it scare you? How much is it gonna, like, the, one of the biggest questions is, people are asking like what am I supposed to do I'm like what are you most afraid of and that's the answer that's that's what they should be doing because they already know but they're 
everything is an excuse. I can't do this. I shouldn't do this. My mom, my dad, my sister, my, my friends, they don't get it. They won't, you know, uh, the, the market says I shouldn't do it. The advisor, Brian says you shouldn't do it, right? Fuck that. I'm wrong. You're wrong. Everybody is wrong, but you go figure out your own way. And so if people are telling you wrong, you know, listen, of course, and make sure you, you get that, but move forward too. But don't let it paralyze you. A lot of people let them, let some paralyze. And I think that's like, ah, it's really, really annoying and scary. And you see those people and when they become 41, uh, you know, I'll continue with this, right? When they become 41 and they haven't gone their own path, they become different people. They become kind of shells of their previous self where they aren't really pushing the boundaries as much. They forget how to, they forget they should, they forget it's natural. And uh, they, they, everything is an excuse for why it won't work, why they shouldn't do it, why it's not their responsibility and, and all this sort of stuff. So uh, it is a very, very strong contrast between these two kind of people. Thinking about all of the ideas that I have. And, yeah, and do it. Like, I mean, you know, it's easy. How, how do you pick one? Because there's yeah. all these things, you know, like right now I'm trying to write yeah. a proposal for a grant for, uh -huh. um, the National Geographic Fellowship. Cool. Good luck. And the end goal I know is a documentary. Okay. And writing for National Geographic. But okay. The topic I have billions of them because there's okay. so many things you can cover. But I yeah. want something new. I want something innovative. Yeah. I don't want to just repeat everything yeah. else's work. Yeah. So what have you done? Um, so far, I've I've interned with Collective, and I'm trying to find okay. my basis. Good I'm start. Really, yeah. Good win. Uh, Big win. Originally, the idea was um, urbanization and kind of the people, the, the people story in urbanization, and yeah. how cool. China's environment is coming back. Cool. But then there's also this idea of well, I could study life logging and see how mm -hmm. life logging has impacted people's mm -hmm. lives because it's kind of it's okay. not a new thing. But okay, stop. Really Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I, I like it. I like there's all these ideas here, yeah. but what have you actually been doing to work towards it? I think, you know, the thing about taking action, small steps and, and those small wins is that through those small wins, you find your way. But if you're just thinking about it, nothing happens. Like you started with, I'm thinking about writing a proposal or I'm preparing to write a proposal to get money to work on this project, right? There's like several layers away, right? That's what I was talking about. The thinking about thinking about thinking about thinking. So we're trying to get you to action right away in, in a small way and that's what that needs to happen and through the action whatever it is it could just be you know these videos you can see like i really don't like interviewing idiots like this this doesn't help me in my career or you go you, so you now you know that's not what you want or you find out this is great if i could do this for you know times a million times a thousand wherever it is in in a city out in the middle of nowhere i'll be very happy so you start learning from there and, but it requires small steps small action steps how do you pick just you don't pick you just do so even if there's all of these ideas and yeah. this deadline, yeah how do you know who's the deadline for uh, for the proposal for the, it's for the grant yeah so like I have until October to decide and write a proposal just do one so, so you think just yeah, so you think yeah. Just, I started way too early so you think just like could take a direction run with it and see where it develops so so uh, I think a lot of times we are looking at different directions and any direction is a good direction but until you know why so why are you doing it so list out all the 10 different directions that you might have and just do 10 please right <laughs> just start with 10 and then look at all the why's behind it so don't look at what it is but the why behind it and say look at which ones make the most sense and probably from that why you can even see that there's a pattern in it and then whichever one feels most powerful to you and go with that and just 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 do that and start. It's okay. I'm I'm a very indecisive person. Yeah, yeah. But congratulations. How does, into, how does that play into finding an action and just going with it? Like. Uh huh. It just, I, I so indecision I comes from people who aren't tapped into their emotions, right? And I don't know you, but uh, typically this is what happens. People are too logical, too smart, and they're analyzing. They're not feeling. So I'm going to ask you to feel the right answer. That's why I asked you to look at the whys. And from the whys, you feel that this one resonates with you. So you're going to go with that. And of course, these are all ideas that you're coming up with. So they should all resonate in some way. But we're talking about ones that really make you go like, oh shit, I have to do this. Like, I, this is it. This is, it just goes, oh, of course. Why didn't I think of that? And you probably, I think you're smiling. I think you have that idea already. So go with that.